What are the keys to being a successful TV actor? Uh, it's interesting. I should probably, I guest starred on most of those shows, but on the, the show Home Improvement with Tim Allen, I was a recurring character on the show for eight years. So the trick to being a good actor for television is you have to be prepared and know your work. And you have to know that when they set you in a spot, you can't move if you're having to come into that spot to hit that mark perfectly. If you don't hit that mark perfectly, you're out of focus and they're going to have to do it again. And the thing about television is they work fast. You know, they'll do a, a, an hour TV show in five days. And that's a lot of work and a lot of setups and they cannot afford let me put it this way. You cannot afford as an actor to show up and not be prepared and know your work because you're only going to slow them down. And believe me, that will get around town. There are actors that word gets around town and they don't get hired. So uh, uh, I pride myself on the fact that when I show up, I know my work. I'm ready to work. And if you have to do a second take, it's because somebody else screwed up. It ain't going to be me. So I think that's the key to being successful in television. Uh, I think attitude is a lot, too. Uh, I try to go in with a, a good attitude. Just an example, I did a, a guest star on a show last season called Justified. And I went in, and I knew my work, and we did it, and I was gone I think I had an 8 o'clock call, and at 1 o'clock, I was gone because I, I knew my work. As I was leaving, the director and one of the head writers came over and said, we just want you to know you're back next season. I said, I am? Nobody told me that. <laughs> so uh, as it turned out, uh, they didn't kill me, and they kill everybody on this show. And uh, I just did the first episode of the new season which comes back on in January on FX. And I think a lot of the reason they brought me back is they know that they work fast and they know that I know my stuff and we'll get her done and get out of there. And uh, it's nice to have that reputation that uh, sometimes people will book you, call my agent and just book me. I don't even audition. But I don't mind going into an audition either. I'm, I've never reached that point where I'm too big for my britches, you know. So just being able to work fast, know your work, show up on time, uh, all those things really add up and it makes for you being a successful actor. What are the keys to being a successful actor in television? You know, you could apply that same question to film as well. Because I pride myself on the fact that when when I get a job, I'm doing a guest star, I'm working one day, I might be working all week. I know my material. I work on it at home, I learn everything. So when I show up for work, everybody else better be prepared because I am prepared. And I think when a director, a producer, a, a, a first assistant director, see that this is a guy who shows up ready to work, he's on time, he knows how to hit his mark and stay in focus. All these little things that we attribute to what a successful actor is, you get booked a lot more than the guy who's a little bit late to work or the guy who has to do four or five takes because he can't get this one line. You know, it's the guys that are dependable who become the successful actors. There's no question in my mind. The film and music industries are known for having unique and colorful characters. How do you deal with difficult people? Difficult people? That's a good question. I try to avoid difficult people. 
uh, in a situation where we're on the set, if they're doing something that I think is destructive to me as an actor or to the scene, we better stop right now and have a little meeting and a little talk about what we're going to do here. I had a guy one time point a rifle right into my face. Well, you don't do that. And I grabbed the barrel. I said, never, ever point a gun at me until I've seen the breach of that gun and I know it's unloaded. Because you don't know. Supposed to be always unloaded. But if you're going to point, a, if I'm going to point a gun at you, I'm going to come over and I'm going to say, I want you to look in this breach. I want, I'm going to pull this receiver back. I want you to see that it's empty. There's nothing in the chamber. Now you know it's empty because nobody's going to have that gun in its hand but me, and I've already showed it to you. But for a guy to just walk up and point a rifle in my face, I got a little hot, and this is a, a little problem we need to talk about. And I got right in his face, and I made it very clear, never, ever point a gun at me until you've come to me, and I know that gun, gun is empty. So that's just one little example. For the most part, we're all on the same page. We all want to make this thing as good as we can make it. But every now and then a little little uh, glitch will arise like that, and uh, you're not going to get past me on that one. <laughs> um, if your next project was guaranteed to be a major success, uh, would you rather prefer it in film, TV, or uh, music? That's a great question. I think I'd want it to be, and this is going to sound silly, TV. And I'll tell you why. And Bill Bixby told me this when I did my first Incredible Hulk. He said, you can do a movie and it be a smash movie, which we all love to do that. But there's still, there's only going to be a certain number of people that are going to go to the theater and see that movie. When it runs on TV, you'll probably get more viewers on television than you ever got in the theater. Bill Bixby said to me, I had a choice when I was a young actor in, in my career. I could do film and be successful, or I could do television and be successful. I chose television because television I'm going to see these people in their home every week. When the show is finished running for the season, it's going to rerun in the off season. I'm going to get paid again just like I did that show. So in the long run, I'll make more money, I'll be seen by more people, and I'll be on TV every week if I had a successful TV series much more over film. Music is not really in the equation for me today. I still uh, like to play my guitar and I write, but I don't play drums anymore. Uh, I just, I burned myself out the 23 years that I was on an airplane seven days a week, 10 months out of the year, going around the world playing music. And you know what? It's a young man's business. When I was young, I absolutely loved every minute of it. But as you get older, the traveling every single day and being at a different airport every single day uh, got to be a real drag. Now, some of the hillbilly guys, they use buses. Well, I don't do a bus very well at all. You know what, fly me first class, let me go in, check in the hotel, get some rest, I'll be ready for the concert. But all these hillbilly guys, they love being on the bus. And uh, I was just the opposite. Merle Haggard asked me to be his drummer years ago. And I, I, I said, Merle, I, I love you. You're my favorite artist. But you take a bus, and I'm not doing the bus. You'd have to fly me first class, and I'll be waiting for you when the bus rolls in. But... Uh, for me, I think the answer to that question, now that I've made it a long answer, is television. If you were greenlit a film, who would be your dream team of actors and crew? If I, Say it again. If you were greenlit a film, who would be your dream team of 
It would be your dream cast. Wow, that's that's great. Well, I'm supposed to do a movie for Quentin Tarantino coming up called Django Unchained. And I think he has a dream cast. He has Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz from Inglorious Bastards, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Kevin Costner, but I, I heard that that might be a change. And, uh, oh, and Mickey Jones, which is my dream cast right there. <laughs> Um, and I asked Quentin Tarantino, we had a meeting, I said, so what part are you going to play? Because he always plays a part in his films. And he smiled and looked at me and said, you know, I'm going to have to think about that. I haven't really given that much thought yet. I'm getting the, the main guys right now, and then I will think about my, what I'm going to do later on. So, but a good question, I, cause, but I don't know. And he would be part of that dream cast because he will be in that film somewhere. Have you ever performed a death scene and what is it like performing those death scenes? Oh, I've, I've been killed 92 times. I've killed 137 people on camera, but I've also died 92 times. And, the, uh, and people ask, well, how? If you've killed 137, how come you've only died 92? I said, because in some films, in a film with Don Johnson called Dead Bang, I kill about eight people, but I can only die once. So the reality is I have done a lot of death scenes. There are little tricks to, to dying, and it depends on how you're dying. Uh, a lot of stunt guys, friends of mine, have given me a lot of help on that. If you're going to get shot in the chest... You're going to shoot me in the chest. I'm going to get a little bit of a blood hit here and a, 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 a squib that's going to blow a hole in my shirt and blood's going to come out. But only a little blood. If it's a big caliber, it's going to go all the way through. Then they need to put a big blood bag on the back, on my back, with blood. And we put hamburger and cottage cheese. So when that blows out and splatters on the wall, it looks like you blew my whole insides out. So when I take that bullet hit, the hits here, I have to absorb that hit. I can't just fall down. I've got to take the hit like that because so you can see the absorption of that big, large caliber that's going to blow all this tissue out. He's got to absorb it and take it that way before you go down. That's just one. I mean, I, I, I've been shot. I've been crushed. I've been thrown a hundred yards by an alien. Uh, I, I've had a pair of deer antlers plunged into my back. And I mean, I, I've died in about any way you can think of dying. I've, I've done it, you know. And uh, you know what the hardest part? I just did a, a pilot for a TV series called Lock and Key and they kill me, but you, you don't see him actually kill me. But you do see the next scene is I'm on the lift gate of a truck and they're my body and I'm, I'm dead and my eyes are open. And then once the lift gate gets to the top, he reaches down and rolls me into the truck. So the hardest part was coming up on that lift with my eyes open and the camera is right there and I'm getting tighter into the camera as the lift gate comes open and I can't I can't let my eyes move. So if you're going to take a bullet hit, there's a way to take a bullet hit and make it real and make it believable. If I'm going to get shot dead in the chest, first of all, there's going to be a squib and there's going to be a little hole blow out and blood is going to come out. Not much, a little bit. But if it's a big caliber and it's going to go all the way through, then we're going to put on my back a big plastic bag full of blood. And they usually load in hamburger and cottage cheese so that when that bullet hits, that explodes tissue all over the wall. It looks real. But as an actor, and you're taking the hit, you've got to absorb that hit. So you can't just take, take the hit and fall down. 
you got to take the hit and the, and make it believe that you really pounded me like with a hammer. But as an actor, you have to sell all that by absorbing that bullet round. So you can't just take the bullet, boom, and fall down. You have to absorb it so it looks like this thing slammed you like a sledgehammer. So when that bullet hits, you've got to take it like this. You've got to really absorb it and almost let your arms go forward because your body's going back. And then when they see that splatter on the wall, that's a successful bullet hit. What was your toughest acting role? I think one of my toughest acting roles was one of my first acting roles. And it was an episode of The Incredible Hulk. And I played a mentally retarded kid. He was described as 19 going on nine. And I played him as a little kid in a big body, an adult body. And I had to improvise things. In the episode of The Incredible Hulk, I get in my brother's race car and I start it and I'm pretending I'm a race car driver and I'm having to make all the sounds. Get it in second, Ricky, get it. Well, I had to improvise all this stuff. By the time we finished a magazine of film and the director said, okay, cut. I was absolutely exhausted. I could hardly move or breathe. I was so tired. So I think it was probably one of my hardest roles was to play this retarded kid and not make him an idiot or a punch drunk fighter, but make him a little kid in a big body. And the extremes I used in that was uh, little kids get reprimanded and you get in their face and it breaks their heart. And if you say, hey, Ricky, that was a great job, man. You did great. Then they're 10 feet tall. And kids are just that way. They're that vulnerable. They're, they, they're on top of the mountain or they're in the valley. And uh, that's what I did with that character. And I got submitted by the producer for an Emmy for it. And uh, I got a lot of mail from teachers of retarded kids who, who said thank you for not making him stupid or an idiot because they're not. And so I, I think that was one of the hardest jobs I had because quite honestly, you hire me as a biker, I ride motorcycle, I know how to play a biker. I pretty much know how to do that and got it under my belt. You hire me as a truck driver, you know what? I can look like a truck driver. I can talk like a truck driver, I can act like a truck driver. The role I'm doing on Justified right now, I play a character called Rodney Hot Rod Dunham, and he is the big drug kingpin in Memphis. So I got to talk a little Memphis, a little Tennessee, a little Kentucky. And you know what? I can do that. To play that retarded kid. I'm pretty sure that's probably the hardest job I've ever done. How important is realism in TV and movies? Mm -hmm. You just hit a, a real soft spot for me. There are shows on TV, and I'm not going to name any names, but they're not real at all. There's gratuitous violence. You know what? You hire me to be a hitman, I'll put a bullet in your head as fast as I can think. But for me to do that, I have to create this character in my own brain. Why did this guy become a killer? What happened in his life to make him so cold-blooded he'd walk up and put a bullet in your eye? Well, I can do that. But show me that in the show. If it's not real and nobody has created a life for this character to make it believable why he's doing the things he's doing, I'm not interested. You got to create a life and create and give me a reason for your actions. You know, if you can do that, man, I'll be your biggest fan. But so much of television today is just Gratuitous violence for no reason. They don't explain why. And I, I just don't buy it, you know. So that's one of the things I have to give justified kudos for. 
is they do make it real. Everything is real on that show. And, and I've tried to create a character for myself so that I know why my character is in the position he's in. And I've made it in the last, last episode, which are the first episode of the new season. I made it, well, I, I can be the nicest guy in the world, but brother, don't cross me because you're going to pay the price. And that's really, that's really what we all have to do as actors. Create that character. Find a reason for the actions that you're doing on film. It's a lot more than memorizing the lines and trying to walk and talk at the same time. It's more to it than that. And uh, I think the actors who truly do their homework and create a life for this character uh, are the ones who sustain in our business because uh, directors who have all the power in the world rely on them. What is the difference between your artistic influences when you first entered the business versus your influences now? Hmm. That's a good question because when I entered the business, when I started, I knew nothing about acting. I learned through the baptism of fire, I guess, because I learned on my first few jobs that if the camera's right here and it's focused right on me, I can do this and be out of focus. And it maybe is more so with film because it's all manual focus. You hit a mark and you have to know how to hit that mark without looking down at that mark. And if you don't hit that mark, you're out of focus. So you have to learn that technique, how to m move into a, a, a space and be dead on focus with the camera because the cameraman will be your best friend then. And the way you do that is you take a couple practice steps. I know where I'm stepping, and when I step here, I'm dead on that mark. Or if you got to walk all the way across the room, you may have to do something where you're walking across the room and you're going... <laughs> Look, and when I'm doing this, I'm looking to make sure I'm dead on the mark. So there are little tricks and little things that you learn that I didn't know any of that about when I started in the business. And, uh, and I know those things now. And it's very, very important that every actor know everybody else's job. I need to know what the camera's going to do, if he's going to be on a dolly or where he's going to end up. I need to know where the frame is. Is it my frame here or is it here? So I'll know how much movement I have. I need to know where the lights are, which is my key light, so I'm dead in my light. I need to know that I'm not stepping into somebody else's light who's being lit from over here. I need to know, is my makeup the right way for this character? So every actor needs to learn every aspect of film and television because if you know all these things going in, you've helped everybody on the set and they're gonna make you look good. So I am a hundred miles from where I started to where I am now. And uh, I, I'm very proud of the work I do. And I think what makes me most proud is that I come to work prepared. I do my homework. And if you do your homework, and there's a screw up, and it ain't you. That they remember that <laughs> they really do. If you could choose one character that you played on TV to become one of the main main cast members of the show, of that show, sorry, what would it be and why? Wow. There's a character that I've never played that I'd like to play. I'd always I always wanted to play Lenny in Of Mice and Men, which is Steinbeck, one of the greatest stories ever written. Uh, Gary Sinise played Lenny, and he's all wrong for Lenny, but he played Lenny in the movie Of Mice and Men, and now it made him a, a big star. And I would love to go play Lenny, because Lenny is a big guy who's not too bright, and and he's he's kind of a moron but he has such a great heart everybody loves him 
And uh, that's a character I'd love to play. Uh, if I wanted to do a character, uh, like for a TV series that would last, I, I play outlaw bikers pretty well. Uh, I would like to play an outlaw biker who's really an undercover cop, but nobody knows except one person, and that's his boss on the show. To everybody else, and even to the audience for the first first show or two, he's just this outlaw biker. He's not really a cop. But I think that would be a great premise for a series, that here I get to be this really bad guy, but I'm really a good guy. So I just think there's... There, a, a good writers could have a field day with that concept. I'd love to see that happen. I think one of my favorite characters I've ever played was Ricky in The Incredible Hulk. One of my other favorite characters was uh, Scooter in a movie called The Fighting Temptations with Cuba Gooding Jr., Beyonce, Steve Harvey. Uh, it's just do yourself a favor and rent the DVD of The Fighting Temptations. It, you will feel like a million bucks at the end of this movie. And you will laugh so hard during this movie, you won't be able to stay on the couch. You'll be on the floor. So it's a great movie, and I loved my character. Uh, he's a redneck pig farmer who becomes the organist for the all-black Beulah Baptist Church Gospel Choir. And I, I'm telling you, do not miss this movie. It's, uh, it's one of the most fun movies I've ever, ever done in my life. So between Ricky and The Fighting Temptations and my dream TV series, uh, co pretty much covers the gamut of all my characters. <laughs>